Jeff, I'm not happy. I want a divorce. Although Jeff was taken aback, he wasn't entirely caught off guard. They'd been married nearly 20 years, but Darlene had been confiding in her friend and self-proclaimed marriage expert Miranda a lot lately. Miranda's expertise stemmed from her own three divorces. Jeff, are you listening? I want a divorce. Yes, Darlene, I heard you. But this is a serious matter, and I don't want to rush my response. I believe I've been a loving and dedicated husband and a good father. You haven't mentioned any issues in our bed life, so I'm in the dark about what's gone wrong. However, after hearing your words, my stance is that I can't bear the thought of your happiness being compromised by our marriage. Though it hurts, I'll stand by you in this divorce. But I need to know, is this a recent issue, or has it been brewing for a while? Darlene responded, Yes, gradually. I need some space, some time to explore other opportunities, meet new people. As far as I know, the court mandates that we be legally separated within 90 days of signing the papers. Maybe down the line I might change my mind and want to remain married. We might not need to go through with a divorce, Jeff pondered. That's similar to what I've heard from others going through divorces. During the 90-day separation period, we're both free to date other people without it being considered cheating. But ultimately, we both need to agree to halt the divorce. However, either of us can proceed with the divorce without the other's consent. Jeff realized that Darlene didn't grasp that he had the same freedom as she did. I thought that if I filed the paperwork first, it would be up to me whether to continue the marriage or proceed with the divorce. Darlene hesitated. Jeff objected. I don't think that's fair, but just to be clear, I'll also file so that we're on equal footing. Does that sound reasonable? Darlene stuttered. Um, I suppose. Are you suggesting that you want a divorce? It seems I mistakenly believed I was fulfilling the role of a suitable husband, father, and partner. No, I'm not seeking a divorce, but I won't obstruct your future. Darling, I never implied you were inadequate. You've been a remarkable husband, father, and partner. I simply desire new experiences to spend time with others. It might bring me some fulfillment. I just need some space. Legal separation will grant me that freedom. Darlene, the fact that you require more than I can provide highlights my shortcomings. He fell silent briefly before continuing. Have you already consulted a lawyer and completed the paperwork? She brushed off his comment about feeling inadequate. No, I haven't obtained the documents yet. I intend to hire Junior Lewis. He handled Miranda's divorces. Thus, Darlene confirmed the influence of Miranda in seeking more from their marriage. Well, I'll likely enlist my cousin Sally to handle my side of the divorce. Sally, a real nightmare. Dare, I know you're not fond of Sally, but she's genuinely kind-hearted. Her tough reputation comes from her profession. She fiercely advocates for her clients, regardless of gender. Interestingly, after the last family gathering, probably due to a few too many drinks, Sally offered to represent me for free if I ever needed a divorce lawyer. Wow, Jeff continued. We need to discuss something. I suggest you use the next two weeks to prepare for your divorce. That way we can start our separation on the first of the month. Okay, that works. But I'm not sure why we need to do anything before the separation period ends, Jeff clarified. Well, I suppose the purpose of the separation is to experience what life might be like after divorce. To help us decide if it's what we truly want. So, this separation period should serve as a sort of trial for post-divorce life. Otherwise, we might not gain any clarity until the divorce itself, which could be messy. Does that make sense to you? Maybe. I hadn't really thought about it. Darlene's resolve began to waver. How about this? Let's head to the kitchen, grab a notepad, and start outlining everything we need to do. I'll brew some coffee. With those words, Jeff left the bed and headed to the kitchen, leaving Darlene to ponder. When Darlene arrived in the kitchen, the coffee was already boiling, and Jeff was jotting down notes. All right, Jeff resumed. There's so much to consider. It's hard to know where to begin. I think we should start with discussing the children. What do you mean? Darlene inquired. Well, we'll need to explain the situation to them, ensuring we both communicate the same message and reassure them that our divorce isn't their fault, Jeff explained. Darlene expressed her concern about breaking the news to their daughters, suggesting that they might not take it well and questioning the need to tell them so soon. She proposed waiting out the 90 days and possibly avoiding telling them altogether. Jeff countered, suggesting that they needed a plan for addressing their daughter's inevitable questions about the separation. He proposed that Darlene continue living in the house during the separation, allowing them to maintain a semblance of normalcy for the children while still spending time together occasionally. 
However, Darlene remained unconvinced, pointing out potential pitfalls in their plan. She highlighted the challenges of synchronizing their social lives and the risk of one person feeling resentful if the other wasn't on board with going out. She also emphasized the importance of experiencing post-divorce life authentically and the potential impact on their children if they were to see them socializing with other people. They discussed the need to inform not only their daughters but also extended family and friends to avoid suspicion of infidelity. They acknowledged the risk of their children blaming themselves, despite reassurances, stressing the importance of consistency in messaging and expressing love. They recognized the potential need for professional counseling, but remained hopeful that their resilient children would adapt. Jeff mentioned the possibility of their children gaining additional grandparents from their new partners, which could mean more gifts for special occasions. However, they acknowledged the need for careful coordination of events like birthdays and holidays. Jeff also pointed out the importance of discretion regarding their romantic relationships, suggesting that meeting partners elsewhere would be more appropriate than bringing them home while the other parent was present with the children. They discussed the financial implications of maintaining two separate households, acknowledging that this would increase their expenses. Jeff explained that they would each need to adjust to managing and covering all expenses independently. He mentioned the common practice of dividing joint assets evenly in divorce cases, which would entail closing joint accounts and establishing child support arrangements. Understood. There's so much to address before the first day arrives. Darlene sat there in shock, uncertain of what to say. Jeff continued. I'll look into renting an apartment closer to my workplace so the girls will have a bed when they stay over on the nights I have visitation. The standard visitation schedule in most divorces allows the non-resident parent to see the children every weekend and every other major holiday, unless otherwise agreed upon by the resident parent. Darlene expressed her surprise that Jeff wasn't dating more frequently, noting how much both he and their daughters enjoyed their time together amidst their various activities. Jeff assured her that he would remain involved in their lives as much as possible, but emphasized that Darlene and her partner should be prepared to take on some of the responsibilities he currently handles. He mentioned the potential challenges of weeknight visits due to school commitments. He also discussed the possibility of assisting a new partner's children with homework and activities, suggesting that Darlene might need to help her new husband with his children as well. Jeff highlighted logistical challenges, such as managing belongings in two locations and transportation issues, particularly if he doesn't live on a bus route for their school, which could disrupt their routine. This isn't unfolding, as Miranda assured, Darlene mused. She said my husband would relent at the mention of divorce, offering to maintain everything he did for the family while allowing me to date others on the side. I'm losing control of the situation rapidly, Jeff. I'm stunned. I need to get some rest. We'll reconvene tomorrow. I'm going back to bed. You continue. Sorry, honey, but I need to jot down something else before I turn in. You know how my mind operates. The more groundwork we lay before the first day, the more at ease we'll be. Good night, dear. Darlene barely slept. She needed to speak to Miranda and update her on Jeff's unexpected response. Miranda would know the next steps. This assurance allowed her to eventually drift off. She woke up to begin her day and immediately noticed Jeff wasn't in bed with her. Oh my god, this fool stayed up all night working on the divorce checklist. But upon entering the kitchen, Jeff wasn't there. Just a notepad on the table. Darlene peered into the guest bedroom to find her husband sound asleep. Returning to the kitchen, she began her breakfast. As everything cooked, she glanced at her notepad, listing items under the heading, Liabilities to Change. This encompassed tasks like adjusting the mortgage, homeowner's insurance, utilities, gas, water, electric, cable, cell phone plan, garbage service, internet, internet security, car payment, car insurance, health insurance, dental insurance, Amazon Prime, LifeLock membership, LifeFlight, and Medivac, among others. This was on top of the banking alterations they discussed the night before. On the following page, there was a breakdown of his anticipated expenses related to his stay in the apartment, along with a projected budget indicating the amount of child support she'd require to sustain her and the girl's current lifestyle. The projections indicated a shortfall of several hundred dollars each month. He also outlined strategies to cut costs, including giving up his frequent visits to Waffle House and Starbucks, a prospect that seemed to amuse her. She then added her own expenses to the list, such as her gym membership, participation in a women's group, and dining out more than once a week. He even included some of the children's expenses, 
detailing fees for extracurricular activities, uniforms, and other essentials. The potential impact on the children wasn't factored into her divorce plan. On another page, he listed tasks that Darlene would need to take care of, including refueling the car, regular maintenance, arranging for a mechanic or plumber when needed, calling for heating and air conditioning repairs, lawn care, car washing, grocery shopping, and so forth. She had to set aside the notepad. Darn it. Why isn't Jeff behaving as he should and giving me what I want? I need to call Miranda before Jeff wakes up. Hello, Miranda, it's Darlene. We have to keep our voices down because Jeff is sleeping nearby. How did it go last night? Miranda's voice conveyed excitement, anticipating a positive update from Darlene. Instead of asking how he could improve to prevent me from divorcing him, he agreed to the divorce and then began listing all the tasks he currently handles that I'd have to take on if we go through with the divorce. Jeff intends to rent an apartment and only take care of the girls on weekends. He insists that we truly separate and behave as if we're divorced to make a more informed decision about whether to proceed with the divorce after 90 days. He doesn't seem genuinely frightened by the prospect of divorce. What should I do? Listen, 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 foolish girl. He's just trying to manipulate you. He's bluffing. There's no way he'll actually sign any papers. It's a shame he feels the need to enumerate all the small things he does to make you feel more dependent on him than he is on you. The bottom line is, you control the kids and what happens between your legs. Only these two things will keep him in line. It's all talk on his part. Don't worry. Before long, you and Robert will be enjoying each other in bed, and you'll still have a husband and a home. I hope you're correct, and Robert is worth the trouble. Well, Jeff hasn't taken any action yet. I'll remain resolute, at least until I see what his next move is. Thank you, Miranda. He's getting up. I have to go. Hey, Jeff. Would you like some coffee? Darlene asked nervously. Her husband shuffled over to the coffee pot and mentioned that drinking coffee late at night wasn't wise. I hardly slept. Why didn't you join me in bed? Well, I went for a walk, but I didn't trust myself. What do you mean? Sweetheart, I saw you sleeping undressed and I became quite aroused. You're still the most beautiful woman I know. I'm hesitant. I fear that if we were to have lovemaking, it would only be out of pity to alleviate my pain over the divorce proposal. I wasn't sure I could resist. Darling, we're still married. I belong to you and no one else, at least until we separate. Can't we act like husband and wife until then? I'm afraid not. I'm more convinced than ever that separation actions must commence promptly. Though the official split won't start until the first of the month, it essentially began on the second. You mentioned I'm unhappy. It'll be difficult for me, but I genuinely want to see you happy, even if I no longer play a significant role in your life. Darlene reassured Jeff that their separation didn't necessarily mean they had to pursue a divorce. She asked him to relax and give her some time to discover herself, expressing confidence that they would remain married and perhaps even strengthen their bond. Jeff expressed doubt in her words and announced his decision to take the day off to handle division-related matters. He mentioned that Billy would oversee maintenance crews during the day and outlined logistical arrangements regarding finances and accounts, emphasizing the need to act promptly. He also reminded Darlene not to be late for work, as he would prepare breakfast for the children and take them to school. Later, as Robert, a charming colleague, came by the office to flirt with Darlene, she felt anxious but agreed to discuss enjoying music together at a later time. Her thoughts shifted from her separation from Jeff to memories of carnal moments with Robert in the elevator. Upon returning home from work, Darlene noticed signs that Jeff had been there during the day. Seeing this, she felt somewhat relieved, emotionally prepared to confront the financial matters he had discussed. It seemed like he was thinking, I have 90 days to explore, we'll remain married, and then I'll try to figure out how to engage in a relationship with Robert without getting caught. Sitting down at the kitchen table, she reviewed her notebook once more. Jeff had added a few more items to the list. However, she also noticed a new list titled Possible Women for Today. It consisted of two columns, women who have already expressed interest and women would like to know if they are interested. While the columns weren't extensive, the names in the first column startled her. One of them was her sister, Erica. Darlene immediately dialed Erica's number. Hello, Dare, Erica answered. How are you? How dare you attempt to steal my husband? Hey, slow down, girl. What's this about? Jeff made a list of women who told him they wanted to date him and your name is on it. I'm not sure about the list, but I once mentioned to him, after I had a bit too much to drink, that if he ever wisens up and leaves your foolish, unappreciative self, I'd be interested in taking your place. 
Wait, what's happening? That he's presenting you a list of women who are interested in him? Are you implying there's trouble in paradise? Did you catch him? Or did he catch you with someone else? That's beside the point. I simply informed him that I needed some space, some time to myself to explore new relationships here. Erica cut her off. Yeah, you're looking for something on the side. Who is it? Or are there multiple? No, I haven't been involved with anyone yet. Jeff and I are just going through the 90-day separation, and then we'll decide if we want to remain married or not. All right. Erica accused Darlene of having someone specific in mind and expressed indifference towards it. She questioned Darlene about their impending legal separation and warned that if anyone desired to be carnal with Jeff, there was nothing Darlene could do about it. Erica promised to pursue Jeff herself once Darlene was legally separated, pledging absolute fidelity to him. Darlene defended her decision to separate from Jeff, pointing out that it was her initiative despite previously praising him as a husband and provider. Erica criticized Darlene's actions as foolish and naive, given Jeff's qualities as a provider, husband, father, and lover. She urged Darlene to notify her as soon as she was free from the marriage and ended the conversation. After the call, Darlene attempted to settle her nerves. However, it didn't help as she glanced at the lists of women again. Among them was Jenny, his secretary, a petite single mother, stunningly beautiful but nearly 20 years younger than Jeff. Yet there she was, topping the list, indicating her interest in dating her husband, perhaps seeking a provider for herself and her child. Two other women were listed, one of whom was married, as denoted by the M next to her name. The remaining names belonged to women who worked alongside Jeff, some of whom Darlene recognized from their local area. Despite holding a degree in psychology, Jeff had worked as a laborer during college and maintained his affinity for the trade, growing his business to encompass three teams. Darlene suspected he was evaluating these women's plumbing skills, as well as the state of their home's plumbing. The three unnamed women on the list were simply labeled as a waitress at Waffle House, a barista at Starbucks, and a clerk at Walmart. She wondered how many other women found him as appealing as Erica did, she hadn't anticipated him dating while they were apart, but now she pondered if he already had someone else in mind. Jeff entered the house and noticed his wife flipping through a notebook. He had a hunch about the upcoming conversation. Looks like you wasted no time finding a replacement for me, huh? My own sister, of all people. How could you? Darlene retorted. I was merely catching up with your progress in finding a boyfriend, Jeff replied. What do you mean? I don't have a boyfriend, I just want to explore some new relationships, Darlene clarified. What about Robert Turner? Jeff inquired. How do you know about that? Darlene questioned. Robert Turner? What's your plan? Today, I bumped into Sylvia, your boss's secretary, at Walmart during lunch break. She's a notorious gossip. Don't trust everything she says, Jeff explained. After a pause, Darlene couldn't resist and asked, What did she say? According to Sylvia, You're close friends with one of our new partners, Robert Turner, Apparently, he visits your office often and you two have lunch together every day. I asked Darlene what was going on. Considering our company's strict policy against office fraternization, Jeff elaborated, I explained that Robert is an old college friend and that we often hang out together. That's why Sylvia thinks Robert might be one of the men you are considering during our separation, Darlene responded. How far have you taken your research? Jeff probed. Robert is just a friend. We've barely done anything, just talked. I think he might be someone I'd like to date. He's always nice to me and compliments my appearance even when I'm not looking my best, Darlene admitted. Anything more? Jeff pressed. Darlene's expression gave away the answer as she recalled the elevator scenes. Did you do anything that his wife wouldn't like? Jeff continued. Wife? He's not married. Who told you that? Darlene exclaimed. I found out on his Facebook page, Jeff revealed after some computer searching. Is this Robert Turner? Yes, it is. Darlene confirmed. What does his marital status say? Jeff asked. It says he's married to Cynthia and has two sons, Darlene confessed. Maybe he's divorced now, she suggested. The website was updated three days ago. And look at what his wife wrote last. It seems like they're still very much together, Jeff pointed out. He never told me he was married. I would never do anything to break up a marriage, Darlene insisted. Seems like you're okay with breaking up our own marriage, though, Jeff retorted. There was a heavy silence as Darlene realized she was cornered and needed time to think. Robert was the primary reason she contemplated ending things, but she couldn't let Jeff catch wind of it. Well, he was just one of several men I might consider dating. I can make a list just like you, she deflected. Oh my God, I just remembered something crucial. 
If we decide to stay married after the separation, we need to exchange medical reports to ensure we're both free of carnally transmitted diseases, Jeff interjected. You're being gross right now, Darlene shot back. It's just a precaution. I wasn't really planning on dating anyone, especially since it's only for 90 days. But if I feel the urge, I can find someone. I'm sure you'd want to feel safe too. It's not just about you. It's about who you're carnal with, who they've been with, and so forth. Jeff tried to hide his enthusiasm for tightening nuts as Darlene seethed. Changing the subject, he said, Okay, Dar, I promise to update you on what I did to facilitate the separation process today. I have a lot on my plate, most of which starts on the first. Dealing with bank and credit card accounts is a priority right now, so you have easy access to your money. Sorting out the mortgage, utilities, and the like may be handled within the next week or so. Oh, I have some good news regarding finances. Did I mention that my secretary, Jenny, works as a night manager at the Royal Arms? These apartments are conveniently located, so I inquired about vacancies. They have a two-bedroom unit available, but we need to act fast. Normally, they're quite pricey, but she mentioned that if I became an apartment maintenance specialist, I could get a 50% discount on rent. This means more money for you and the kids. You haven't signed the lease yet, have you? Remember, we have 90 days, and if you play your cards right, you might just return here. She considered remarking about his secretary being a gold digger, but concluded it would exacerbate the situation. No, I haven't finalized the lease agreement yet, though I had to explain why I was apartment hunting. She mentioned they typically don't do month-to-month -month rentals, but for 90 days, she could likely make an exception. When Jenny learned about the divorce, she expressed interest in me. I was taken aback by the age gap and all that. I had no clue she found me attractive. I politely declined, citing workplace rules against employees and managers having anything beyond a professional relationship. Jenny suggested she could find a job elsewhere if that was the issue. That's why I mentioned it on the list. Darlene was fuming, but she held back her thoughts, knowing they'd only worsen matters if vocalized. Without waiting for Darlene's response, Jeff went on. Another piece of news you'll probably appreciate. I've booked two tickets for a 10-day Hawaii vacation. I kept it as a surprise for our 20th anniversary. Darlene's demeanor shifted. Hawaii? 180 degrees. Oh, Jeff, you know how much I've always wanted to go there. This is amazing. I can't wait to relax on the beach and swim in the ocean. Thank you, thank you, thank you. However, Jeff's expression didn't match his wife's enthusiasm. We won't be going to Hawaii. When you mentioned divorce, I realized we might not make it to our 20th anniversary. When I tried to cancel and get a refund, they said it was too late, offering only a 20% refund. After some thought, I realized the trip to Hawaii is more your dream than mine. I thought you might still want to go, so I asked them to change the tickets for you and a guest to be named later. It could be a great start to your new relationship if you can offer your new man an all-expenses-paid trip to Hawaii. But Jeff, it was with you that I wanted to go to Hawaii. We could postpone the separation. In fact, I'm considering calling off the whole thing. Now that I've had time to reflect on my life, I'm not as unhappy as I thought. I'm sorry, Dare. I've given this a lot of thought. I don't believe I could be content knowing that the possibility of divorce hangs over us. Even if you retract the divorce now, you can't erase what you expressed wanting. And I can't erase the images in my mind of what you and Robert might have done when you weren't doing anything special. I'll likely proceed with the divorce regardless of your decision, though I can't fathom life without you and being only a part-time father to my girls. Jeff then retreated to the guest bedroom upstairs. Darlene was devastated. She knew only one person to turn to. Miranda, she called. Hello, Darlene, what's wrong? Miranda, everything has gone wrong. Jeff found an apartment and his slim secretary is already flirting with him. Even my sister wants to date him. The worst part is he had tickets to Hawaii for our anniversary and he gave them to me to use, but he won't go. He said I could use them to take my new boyfriend. What do I do now? Hey, what's the problem? You and Robert will have a blast in the sun. Fun and amazing lovemaking. No, I found out Robert is married and his wife and kids are moving here soon. I can't. I don't want to go to Hawaii with him. I want to go with Jeff. Wait a minute. I think I just realized what's happening, Miranda interjected. Wow, Jeff is more cunning than I gave him credit for. He claims he booked the trip ages ago. It was just a ploy to manipulate you into feeling guilty and halting the divorce proceedings. Don't fret. With your attractive figure, you'll find boyfriends as good as, if not better than Robert, in no time all while maintaining your marriage and family. Oh my goodness, I never imagined he could be so deceitful. He'll pay for this. Thank you, Miranda. 
I was on the verge of giving up. He's going to regret it dearly. Let's chat later. When Jeff descended the stairs, he had a small suitcase with him. So, you're trying to make it seem like you're already moving out? No worries. Goodbye and good riddance. Actually, I was just going to take a few things to the apartment to avoid carrying too much at once and startling the girls. Jenny mentioned I could move some stuff in before the first since the apartment was empty. Anyhow, your demeanor seems different from earlier. Let me guess. You were consulting your marriage guru. Miranda is a divorce expert. That's all she managed to be. Don't try to provoke me by insulting Miranda. She's on my side. She caught on to your Hawaii ticket scheme. You fabricated that tale just to coerce me into giving up everything. Nice try. I still want a divorce and can't wait to finalize it. There are plenty of guys out there who desire me and are willing to meet my needs. You're absolutely correct, especially about the attention you'll receive from other guys. I have no doubt you'll have numerous offers once they realize you're available. I've always considered myself incredibly fortunate to have such a stunning woman like you, a fantastic partner in raising our children, and, until recently, a faithful wife and lover. You're mistaken about the Hawaii trip and I can prove it. Just give Lois Simpson at Flight Right Travel Agency a call. I'll dial her now. Hi, Lois. It's Jeff Sinclair again. My wife is on speakerphone, so you can fill her in on the details about the trip. She has a few questions, as expected. Jeff, I'm really sorry you won't be able to go. It seems like you were genuinely looking forward to surprising your wife and enjoying your vacation. What specifics do you need, Mrs. Sinclair? Darlene demanded. Could you please outline exactly what's included in this trip? Certainly. This is our 10-day excursion spanning two islands. It covers accommodations at our top-rated hotels, meals, transportation, hula lessons, luau dinners, traditional tiki performances, opportunities for surfing, swimming, and dancing, all set in a romantic atmosphere. Many couples have found it to be a transformative experience for their marriage. When did your husband initially arrange this trip? Darlene was certain this would expose her. Let's check. According to our records, he inquired about it approximately three months ago then finalized his selection for this specific trip two months ago, with payment made two weeks thereafter. Yesterday, he contacted us to cancel the booking, resulting in a 20% refund. I was surprised when he suggested that you could still go and find another companion. That says a lot about the kind of husband he is. You're quite fortunate. Any other inquiries? We'll need the other person's name for booking the flight tickets. No further questions. I'll get back to you soon with the name, Darlene replied. She tried to anticipate Miranda's response based on this information. After a moment, it clicked. You think you've outsmarted me once more, don't you? You and Lois conspired to fabricate this Hawaii trip story before I even mentioned divorce. Well, I've caught on. She felt proud of her deduction, achieved without Miranda's assistance. Jeff let out a heavy sigh and suggested, You should talk to your parents. What do my parents have to do with this? Who do you think will look after the girls while we're away? Fine, let's call them. Darlene responded, caught off guard. No need to rush into it, Dare. I'm already dialing, Jeff stated. But Jeff, her mother answered the call, recognizing the caller's number. Darlene, how are the girls? Glad you called. Hi, Mom, Darlene greeted hesitantly. Mom, this is Jeff. We're on speakerphone. Hold on, let me get Dad, too, Darlene said, hearing her father's voice in the background. Harold, it's Jeff and Darlene. Pick up, honey. What's going on, guys? Harold joined the conversation. When Darlene remained silent, Jeff spoke up. Darlene knows now, so no need to keep it a secret. Son, we're sorry you can't go. You didn't mention why when you called earlier. I hope it's not health-related. When you called this morning and said we wouldn't babysit the girls for your Hawaii trip, we were disappointed. We were looking forward to having them with us for ten days. And we felt bad for Darlene that you couldn't go with her. We know how much she wants to go, but she'd rather go with you than anyone else. Have you decided who to take, Darlene? It'll be tough for whoever stays, her father commented. No, Mom, I haven't decided yet. How long ago did Jeff discuss the Hawaii trip with you? I'm not sure. Harold, do you remember? It was around New Year's, wasn't it? Almost sure, two or three months ago. He mentioned it early so we could stock up on snacks. These two can eat anything and never gain weight, her mother said. Jeff, Darlene's mother interjected, concerned. Is everything okay with Darlene? Why are you asking? When Jeff talked to us, did something happen between you two? Oh, God! Did you break up? Darlene's mother asked. No, Mom, not exactly. We decided we needed some space, some time apart to recharge our marriage, and then maybe reconcile, Darlene clarified. Dar, I'm not going to lie to your parents. They've always been honest with me, Jeff interjected. Mom, Darlene began, 
I didn't mean to cause alarm. What I meant was that the first step in the divorce process is a 90-day separation. I hope this time would help me find myself, explore new opportunities, and better myself so I can be a better wife and mother. And that's coming from me, Mom, Harold exclaimed. I know liberal lies when I hear them. Darlene, do you have a boyfriend on the side? No, Dad. No, not at all, Darlene denied. Jeff considered speaking up but opted against it. Harold continued while his wife's sobs echoed in the background. I can't believe you could do something like that. We raised you better. I'm so disappointed. Don't expect us to be polite to your new man, Darlene. We're so sorry, Jeff. At least promise us you'll let us see our grandchildren after the divorce. Amid her sobs, Darlene interrupted before Jeff could respond. Jeff has blown this whole thing out of proportion. I take my words back. No divorce, no separation. I'll talk to you later when everything calms down. Seeing Darlene in tears, Jeff urged, You need to pull yourself together. The girls will be home soon. He grabbed his suitcase and headed toward the door. Where are you going? Didn't you hear? I don't want a divorce. You don't have to go anywhere, she pleaded. You unilaterally stated that you want a divorce without talking to me first. Now you think you can unilaterally declare that we won't get divorced because things aren't going the way you planned? You don't seem to understand that I have a voice. After what I've learned about you over the past week, I'm not sure giving up on divorce is a good idea. I'll take a sleeping bag from the garage and stay in the apartment for the night. Jeff, please don't go. I'm sorry. You said it was fine before I brought up this nonsense about wanting a divorce. Can't we just move past it and return to how things were? You claimed you were happy. I was very happy too. But I can't forget how you admitted to being unhappy and planned to have an affair with Robert. Like I said, you've already committed infidelity. Sally mentioned that she could easily draft the divorce papers since they're standard terms. She might even serve them tomorrow. I won't sign them, Darlene retorted sharply. That doesn't matter. All Sally needs to do is ensure you're officially served. She might do it at your workplace to have many witnesses. Perhaps even Robert could claim alienation of affection. I could even serve your boss for violating company policy, but that's going too far. I need you to be able to care for the girls after the divorce. I know. I'll speak to Robert's wife. That should suffice for payback. Why are you so harsh? I love you and you love me. Is there anything I can do to make things right? You said divorce would be tough on both of us. Don't you want to avoid this pain? I promise never to bring up this divorce mess again. Please stay and let's work it out, Darlene pleaded tearfully. Jeff remained silent and motionless. Darlene felt she had made an impact. I pledge to be the best wife in the world. I won't look at another man. I've given you nearly 20 years of a strong marriage, two wonderful children, and supported your business, even when it meant you came home late and dirty. I'm so proud of your success. Everyone makes mistakes. Please give me one more chance. Please, Darlene implored. Finally, Jeff responded. I'll tell you what. I'll go ahead and take my suitcase and sleeping bag to the apartment. I'll ask you to write down a few things. Your words and actions have inflicted more pain on me than you realize. If your responses meet my expectations, I'll contemplate calling off or at least delaying the divorce. I'll return by seven. You might consider sending the kids to their parents or friends so we can speak freely. Yes, yes. Thank you. What should I write? Firstly, I expect an apology for instigating this entire situation, and I want you to plead with me. Not just plead, but beg for my forgiveness. Secondly, instruct Robert to cease contacting you. Any repercussions if he persists? Warn him I can take legal action against him and your company if he fails to comply. Thirdly, enumerate all the reasons why I should consider remaining married to you. Lastly, call Miranda and convey that you never wish to communicate with her again. This is non-negotiable. If I ever hear about Miranda's input again, I will leave immediately. Do you comprehend what I'm requesting if you want us to have a chance at salvaging our marriage? Yes, dear, I believe so. I'll fulfill everything and be prepared by seven. Very well, see you at seven. Jeff grabbed his suitcase and departed. Darlene focused on the final task on the list. Mentally rehearsing her words to Miranda, she uttered, Listening to you was my worst mistake. Because of you, I nearly lost everything dear to me. Do not contact me via call, text, email, or even think of me. If our paths cross in public, steer clear, or I won't be responsible for my actions. Surprised at her sense of relief after confronting Miranda, Darlene dialed Robert and relayed Jeff's instructions. She recounted his desperate plea to meet one last time at the motel, resorting to insults and accusations of her being inadequate. 
Shutting him down, she warned of involving his wife if he continued causing trouble. The anticipated challenge of listing reasons why Jeff should stay married turned out to be the easiest. Liberated from desiring more than what she had with Jeff, Darlene reflected on the joys they shared. She compiled an entire list, hopeful that it would impress Jeff. Expressing remorse for the divorce ruse, she acknowledged, How foolish, self-centered, and presumptuous I was. Never again. As seven o'clock approached, Darlene felt prepared and self-assured. However, when the hour struck and Jeff hadn't returned, a hint of worry crept in. Five minutes later, he reappeared without his luggage, his expression unchanged since he left earlier. Darlene attempted to remain compassionate and humble as she handed him her responses. Here are my answers. I hope you reconsider. Jeff stared at the list for an extended period while perusing it. Tears welled up in his eyes. Seeing him cry, Darlene also began to weep, interpreting his emotional display as a hopeful sign. Dar, this is really impressive, he uttered. Though hopeful, Darlene's heart fluttered as she rose to embrace him, but he gestured for her to remain seated. Your effort is commendable, but I'm not sure you grasp the extent of the pain you've caused me. I fear I must proceed with the divorce, he explained. Darlene was devastated. It felt as if her heart had been shattered. Collapsing to the floor, she sobbed uncontrollably, her grief plunging her into unfamiliar depths. In her despair, she lamented, I've ruined my family's life. I'm the worst person alive. I don't deserve to live. How could I have been so foolish? Jeff knelt before her, whispering, Now you understand how I felt. As Darlene continued to cry on the floor, Jeff approached the door but paused, glancing back at her. During our separation, are we allowed to see other people? Overcome with emotion, Darlene struggled to compose herself enough to respond, her tears hindering her speech. If dating others is permitted, what are your plans for Friday night? Would you like to have dinner and catch a movie? Jeff proposed. You're asking me out on a date? Darlene exclaimed. Yes, I believe we've irreversibly changed our old relationship, but perhaps we can start anew, he suggested. With renewed hope, Darlene rushed towards Jeff. Yes, yes, a thousand times yes.